Das deutsche Volk ist wieder stark geworden in seinem Geiste. Adolf Hitler, leader of the German national movement, is made Chancellor of Germany, and Berlin goes wild in celebration of his victory. Even though Chancellor Hitler is often considered by some to be power-hungry and tempestuous, some German watchers believe he will be less dangerous in government office than he is in the street commanding his stormtroopers. On January 30th, 1933, Adolf Hitler is appointed German Chancellor. He comes to power constitutionally, but the majority of Germans did not vote for him in the previous elections in 1932. That is still the largest share of the vote among the 12 parties in the Reichstag, but two million votes less than in the previous election. Support for the Nazis is actually in decline before Hitler unexpectedly is made chancellor. After coming to power, the Nazis want to consolidate it and call for new elections on March 5th. The party's paramilitary troops, the SA, terrorize their opponents but the Nazis still cannot achieve the absolute majority. They need a two-thirds majority to seize absolute power. So they form a coalition with the German National People's Party and ban the Communist Party giving them the majority they need. On March 23rd, they pass the Enabling Act, which makes parliament obsolete and gives dictatorial power to the Nazi government. Conservative and nationalist elites in Germany tried to use Adolf Hitler to stay in power themselves. But their underestimation of Adolf Hitler will lead to World War II, in which some 70 million people are killed. And to the Holocaust, in which six million Jewish people are murdered, along with hundreds of thousands of Sinti and Roma, homosexuals, people with disabilities, and other victims. Even though the Nazis made their plans of dictatorship clear from the start, part of Hitler's success lies in his ability to appear to be a harmless politician. That's how he appeases the conservative nationalist elites whom he needs to push through his plans for his enabling act later that year. A perfect example of Hitler's duplicity is at the Potsdam celebration, where he trades his uniform for a tailcoat and bows to President Hindenburg. It's a symbolic gesture, new Germany ostensibly paying respect to old Germany. Die Regierung der nationalen Erhebung ist entschlossen, ihre vor dem deutschen Volk übernommene Aufgabe zu erfüllen. Sie tritt daher heute hin vor dem deutschen Reichstag mit dem heißen Wunsch, in ihm eine Stütze zu finden für die Durchführung ihrer Mission. Hitler also tries to appeal to religious groups, combining his nationalist myth-making with biblical metaphors. Kommt, 
in der die Millionen, die uns heute verfluchen, hinter uns stehen und mit uns begrüßen werden dann das gemeinsam geschaffene, wieder erkämpfte, bitter erworbene neue deutsche Reich der Größe und der Ehre und der Kraft und der Herrlichkeit und der Gerechtigkeit. Amen. The masses want to believe his false promises. Adolf Hitler in power. The Nazis can hardly believe their luck. But they fear that everything might be taken away from them again. Then, on the night of February 27th, the Reichstag burns. A 24-year-old Dutch communist named Marinus von der Lubbe is arrested in the Reichstag, which the Nazis take as proof of a communist putsch attempt. Rapidly, they pass new anti-terrorism laws to incarcerate many of their political enemies. Communists and social democrats are deported or killed. The first concentration camp opens in Dachau in Bavaria. Free trade unions are forbidden. Books by intellectuals are burned. And Jews are harassed and their possessions seized. By July 1933, there is only one political party left, the Nazi Party. The Treaty of Versailles, with its reparation payments after World War I, amounts to billions of marks. The global economic crisis makes things worse. Unemployment in Germany hits a new high of nearly 30% in 1932. Back then, democracy in Germany is relatively new and not very popular. Nazis and communists fight in the streets of Berlin. Civil war seems imminent, and people are calling for a strong leader. The Nazis use all of this to promote their cause. The Nazis use radio and film to reach the masses. Especially Josef Goebbels, who masters the art of propaganda. Goebbels controls the images people get to see. He has the torchlight march of January 30th reenacted because there were too many casual passers-by on the actual day Hitler was appointed chancellor. Goebbels is a huge fan of orchestrated mass events. He tells the story that he wants people to believe. Wir befinden uns hier im Sportpalast und sind Augen und Ohren Zeugen dieses wunderbaren, einzigartigen Massenereignisses, wie es in diesem Umfang in Deutschland bisher wohl niemals festzustellen gewesen ist. Ich glaube, wir greifen nicht zu hoch, 
wenn wir sagen, dass in Deutschland mindestens 20 Millionen Menschen Zeugen dieses einzigartigen Ereignisses sind. As Minister for Propaganda, Goebbels builds up a personality cult around Hitler as the savior of the Germans. In the summer of 1933, the Hitler salute becomes mandatory in new totalitarian Nazi Germany. And the swastika, the official symbol. Even interviews with purported journalists from abroad are staged and broadcast. Und Sie, Mr. Bringley, sind jetzt zu uns gekommen, um sich selbst von den Zuständen im neuen Deutschland zu überzeugen. Oh yes, I'm an old visitor of Germany, and I have come here so as to talk over the radio from Germany to America, that the true facts may be given to the American people, so that they will have the story of today and what's going on here. Wenn es also der Zweck Ihres Hierseins ist, Mr. Bringley, Ihren Landsleuten in Amerika von den Zuständen im jetzigen Deutschen Reich zu berichten, so sagen Sie mir doch, welche Eindrücke haben Sie jetzt von dem neuen Deutschland gewonnen? I find that there's a new, fresh vitality here in Germany under your great leader and chancellor, Adolf Hitler, of whom I'm a great admirer. The new Germany will live, for you have the best centralized government in the world today. Ich finde heute herrscht in Deutschland Ruhe und Ordnung. Most of the world watches events unfold in Germany with a mix of dread and disregard. When President Hindenburg dies on August 2, 1934, his office also passes to Adolf Hitler. Hitler now has totalitarian power in Germany for the next 11 dreadful years of terror, murder and war. Which of the reasons for Hitler's ascent surprised you the most? Tell us in the comments.